Let's do an example. So we have an object undergoing SHM, so simple harmonic motion, and it's shown like this. By the way, it might actually help to notice, look, it didn't start off at zero, did it? That actually might be nice to know about. So we're going to have to kind of figure that out. Um, if I want to draw a dotted line, I actually could. If I move this whole thing to the right by a little bit, do you notice if I did this right here, and this point right here, move to the right over here, and I move this point to the right over here, and I move this point to the right over here, and I move this point to the right over here. Turns out I would then get my equation. It would look just like it should. It would look like this, then like this, and then like this. So that's sort of my reference. That's what that's what my sine of omega t looks like without my phase change. So this is what's really happened. It's been moved. So let's answer these questions now and see if these are easy or not. So maximum displacement, what does that mean? Well, that's the amplitude. So that's going to be the top value, like how high it goes. Now it's a zeroed here, it's here. So, uh, so what would this be? Maximum displacement would be 4. Does that make sense? 4 meters? So that would just be x0 equals 4 meters. Okay, great. How about the angular frequency? Now that's a little bit hard. We have some equations for angular frequency though. We have that uh, t equals 1 over f equals 2 pi over omega. This is an equation we have in our formula booklet. Now how does this help us? Well, we can tell the period from this. We can tell the period, let's say we do, um, well we can do it from this point right here. Ah, we'll do it from here actually. From here, for example, all the way over to here, it looks like it's four seconds. Like this would be one complete cycle. Or had we continued this on, you know, we could keep it going. You could say that uh, from the top to the bottom is half of a cycle. So how far is that? From one to three. Oh, that means it went over by two. You have to double that. It's four. Either way, you can find out that the period is four seconds. Now, how does that help you? Well, we can use this, can't we? We know then that 1 over, sorry, we know that 4 then equals 2 pi over omega. Does that make sense? I'm using t equals 2 pi over omega. That means omega must be 2 pi over 4. Well, what does that mean? That means omega equals just, well, 2 over 4 just reduces to pi over 2. So now I have that omega equals pi over 2 radians. Great. That's maybe helpful. What about the phase angle? Here it's a little bit too easier to tell now that I've done this drawing. I hope you can see because this time I was going to look, hey, this thing right here, look, the original, it looks like it's been moved to the left, doesn't it? And left. By how much? Well, again, we don't. I don't really care about the actual amount, like, you know, in seconds, like, you know, but let's just look at the number of boxes here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight different boxes. It's moved to left by one of those. That means if I scaled everything over, if this right here becomes, um, well actually I'll say it like that, so left by one out of eight of a cycle. This is really what's happening, okay? So if the cycle has eight different boxes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's one whole cycle, it's moved to the left by one of these. Well that means it's one over eight, isn't it? Like one out of eight of the cycle. So what does that mean then? Well, if one whole cycle is 2 pi, and I multiply that by 1 over 8, I end up with this. That means I end up with then just 2 over 8, which is 1 over 4. So I end up with pi over 4. And that's going to be in radians. Oh, I just noticed something. This one right here should have been in radians per second. I'm just looking at that now. See, sometimes I make mistakes too. So uh, this would be radians per second, because that's an angular frequency. This isn't just in radians. All right, well now if we want to know what's the velocity then, whoa, how are we going to do that? Well, we can use an equation, can't we? Now, do we know uh, displacement at any point? Not really. So we can't really use the velocity equation that's got this one. I probably have to use this one instead. So V equals omega times x0 cos omega t. Uh, sorry, V equals, yeah, omega x0 cos omega t plus phi. So let me do that one. So I'll write that one down here then. I'll just write down that equation. That means I'm going to use V equals omega times x0 cos of omega t plus phi. Right, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to put in all the numbers now that I know. I know a lot of these things, don't I?
I know that V equals, let's put it in here. What's omega? Omega is pi over 2. So I'll do that over here maybe. So it's pi over 2 times x0. What's x0? Oh, it's 4. That's good. All that times the cosine of, let's see, what's omega? Omega is, again, uh, pi over 2. So I'll put that in here. So pi over 2. All that times 0 0.5. Oop, i got to multiply that by 0 0.5. By the way, multiplying by 0 0.5 is the same thing as dividing by 2. And then don't forget, I'll say plus phi, which is pi over 4. So although this seems a bit complicated, you see I'm just putting in all the values that I just found before. And let's see if we can get any of this here to work out nicely. So we've got V then equals, well, what's pi times 4 over 2? 4 over 2 is just 2. So does that make sense? I end up with 2 pi here. And then I've got the cosine of, okay, let's see here. Let's deal with the first part here. I've got pi times 1 over 2 times 2. That means I've got pi over 4 uh, plus pi over 4. Oh, I'm almost done. I just got to get a common denominator. This is going to be 2 pi over 4, which is just pi over 2. So that means I'm going to have v equals 2 pi times a cosine of pi over 2. Now, depending on your math class, if you know about uh, radians and about solving these, you could actually do this by hand. You could do the cosine of pi over 2. Remember about a unit circle going around. Uh, pi over 2 radians is going to be half, because remember, uh, all the way around is pi, uh, 2 pi radians. So that means halfway around is pi. That means this is pi over 2. So it would be an angle that goes straight up. And cosine is the x value. Uh, that means this here is going to be actually 0. So that means actually v equals 0. So that's going to be the answer. Now, you could have also done this with your calculator. Keep in mind, you could get out your calculator and actually figure out, hey, let me just show you this. You could have done the same thing. You said 2 times pi, just in case you didn't know how to deal with this stuff, no problem. Look, you can say times the cosine. So I'll put that in here, cosine. Keep in mind, you got to be in radian mode, not degree mode. Cosine of pi over, whoops, pi over 2. If I do this, I still get 0. So that means the velocity is zero. Now another way that could have made sense would have been if you just looked at this graph carefully. What's the velocity at 0.5? Look, velocity at 0.5, we're actually asking for the velocity here. And if you remember from your graphs, velocity is just the gradient of the tangent of the displacement. So you notice at the top right here, it's actually a flat, like the gradient here is actually flat. Because of that, you could have also said the v is zero. So without this calculation, you could have just looked at this graph and gotten it. See how we can solve this?